The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 24. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them to the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking with us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what happened on the road, how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When have you had your heart broken? It'd be a good question to, to discuss. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you do that. I bet we'd hear about puppy loves, to real loves, to lost dreams and hurting people. I'm pretty sure that having a broken heart is something that all of us can share a story about. Because having a broken heart is so disappointing, but it is such a part of life, a necessary part of life. And that's what our disciples are feeling in our reading today. Jesus has died. His body was wrapped up, put in a tomb, and sealed up. The women who went to the tomb discover that Jesus' body is missing. An angel tells them that he's risen from the dead, just as he said he would do. The disciples know this. They heard what the women said. They go look. He's not there. So where is he? I think heartbroken is the perfect description of the way they're feeling. And they're walking along, and a stranger shows up and says, well, what are you talking about? And they respond, do you not know what has taken place? The things about Jesus of Nazareth? We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And I can feel that sting of disappointment just in that statement. We had hoped. In their heartbreak, they're sharing it with each other. They're leaning on each other. They weren't off alone. They're walking together during this time, talking about it. Probably still offering some hope to each other, even though they're confused and discouraged. Last November, or last semester, I took an Old Testament class, and in November... 
We got an email from the professor saying that he was resigning from Luther Seminary. And this was a big decision for him and his family. They would be moving. But he's always had a desire for public service, and he was off to serve in the Navy. His experience in Middle Eastern languages and cultures and his passion for international affairs would be served out well in this new calling. Now, a lot of students were disappointed because he's a really great professor. But we all certainly understand that God calls each of us in different ways. And he's been kind of off the grid now. Nobody's really heard much since he started basic training. But this week, he published a YouTube video kind of updating everybody on his life. And he started off by saying how much he truly loved basic training in the Navy. <laughs> he said, it, it, it's a lot like what you hear, you know, people yelling at you and in your face. He goes, but I really did love it. <laughs> and during this time, though, he discovered he had a health issue with his eyes that he did not know about. And it was so significant that he was going to have to leave the Navy. Now, being rather disappointed, he appealed the decision, and it was denied. He said, though, one of the hardest things about going through this process, though, was the fact he had so little contact with his family. It was difficult to go through this on his own. I imagine it was a heartbreaking situation. You might have heard this week about the young man who fell into the Mississippi River on Tuesday. And as of this morning, I haven't heard if they've found him or not. His name is Chris, and his mom is Pastor Melissa Melnick and she is a Lutheran pastor in the cities. And I don't know her personally, but we have many acquaintances in common, and I'm actually familiar with her ministry as it's a mission start in the cities. And I had many friends commenting on social media, offering prayers and encouragement, and attending the vigil that was held for him on Wednesday. And Friday was the day that people were to wear plaid to honor Chris. And his mom, Pastor Melissa, posted a video Thursday on her Facebook page. And it was a recording um, of the raging waters of the Mississippi near the St. Anthony Falls, where he was last seen. But she was narrating it as how much her son loved the river. He was an avid outdoor enthusiast and environmentalist, and he had spent so much of his time on the river, canoeing it and hiking along it and swimming it, and he loved the river. And her voice broke up several times as it was so obvious that her heart was broken. Yesterday, she posted an article in her blog, When the Pastor's Tragedy Becomes the Headlines. And she wrote about how unusual it is for her to be uh, in this situation, because typically she's in the midst of someone else's tragedy. And then she says, But what else can I do but let go and let God and let others by my side? There is no other. Heartbreak comes in so many forms. And I think it's interesting that Professor Chan and his heartbreak acknowledged his need to be with people, people he loved, and how difficult it was to not have that. And Pastor Melissa acknowledged that all she can do is let others be with her, and most importantly, let God be with her. The disciples walking down the road with each other soon find themselves in the company of a stranger. And while the stranger was strange to them, he certain the stranger knew them very well. He tells them the whole story. He lets them tell him the whole story. And they invite him to stay with him. And in the breaking of the bread, they recognize who he is. And they were astounded. astounded. Were our hearts not burning when he was on the road with us? The Lord is risen indeed. Jesus was with them the whole time. Certainly, we celebrate the resurrection and glory with this huge celebration, focusing on the main event as we should. But we often miss the resurrection of Christ's presence with us in our daily walks, in our daily journey in life. Christ is always with us. I think we often forget, too, that the, an important piece of knowing Christ is with us is surrounding ourselves with others especially in our heartbreak. We are meant to be vulnerable to each other, and we are meant to uplift one another. And that 
one of the verses in First Peter really stood out to me. It said, now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. When we love one another deeply from the heart, we will find ourselves moving from that broken heart to that burning heart. From what we had hoped to what we do hope. A burning heart lets you know that you're alive. If you're someone who has had heartburn, you know it is not a pleasant feeling, and in some places downright miserable. But you can't ignore it. It's impossible to ignore. It always draws you into action. But a burning heart in Christ also can't be ignored, as it draws you into his life and loving others deeply. Professor Chan finished on his video by saying that he has peace and joy and he's very excited for what the future holds for him. His family moved back to his hometown and he's excited for his daughter to get to know extended family. And I guess as the Holy Spirit intervened, there's an interim pastor position available and he's going to fill in there for a little while and he's still planning on pursuing some type of public service. But he was very joy-filled and clearly had hope for what God will provide for him next. He has a burning heart. Now, Pastor Melissa, most certainly still with a broken heart, she also has a burning heart. At the end of that article she published yesterday, she wrote, Please know that I find so much comfort and strength in knowing you are praying for Chris around the world. Know that God is with us and God is with you. Chris is a child of God. And God is taking care of him. And his brother and his dad and her. And you too, my dear friend, who is reading this. Peace. I pray many things for my children in their daily lives right now. Things for their future. And one thing that I do, I have genuinely prayed for them, is that they will have a broken heart. Something significant, but not too bad, you know. But <laughs> Just so that they know what the experience feels like. But I also pray that they have the kind of faith, or if they don't, that they're at least surrounded with those that do, that will bring them the hope that comes with every broken heart. Because even more importantly, I hope that they will recognize the community that surrounds them, that Jesus is found there too, always present, walking with them, no matter how much their heart is broken. And I hope for that for you too. Today is our healing service, and everyone is invited to come forward for a blessing, because in some way we all need a bit of healing. And I hope that as you come forward, you realize that Jesus is present with you, that all of us are here walking together and that we all might also feel, no matter how broken our heart is, a heart that is burning with the hope that comes from Christ, from his resurrection and his presence. Christ is risen. Amen.